What's up, what's up to all my gamer friendulums? It's another Sunday. It is June 23rd, and it's time for another look at top news stories in the game adaptation space from the past week. This is for the week of June 17th, 23rd. It's already June. My apartment's warm, so I got the balcony door open. So if you hear car horns, birds chirping, that's because it's too hot to keep the door closed. Let's get into the news. First up on the news over here on Games Radar, there's a famed remake coming of The Thing, which is pretty cool. They're going to remaster a game that I completely missed out on when it came out. I freaking love the movie The Thing. So, but this game, I have no clue what it's about. But they, were, they interviewed the remake dev. So they say The Thing is more than just a new coat of paint. Dead Dive Studios remaster of the 2002 cult classic horror The Thing take advantage of modern tech that wasn't available to the original developers. Talking to Games Raider Plus, Night Dive Studio Business Development Director Larry Cooperman explained the studio's approach to remastering a cult classic. So, approach to remaster as opposed to remaking from the ground up. While he says there's an enormous amount of assets being reused, Cooperman said that there will be some new stuff that work brings the remaster closer to the original vision set up by the Computer Artworks 22 years ago. Computer Artworks was really happy with, uh, justifiably so, with the game that they produced, but they are also aware of limitations of things they could not do simply because of the technology. The game engine did not support it. And without going too much into detail, without providing any spoilers, there are some things that we were able to fulfill the original vision of the developers. That's something that's really important to us. Cooperman doesn't get into any specifics, but at the end of the day, we're talking about a remaster, not a remake. Night Dive did an excellent job with the 2023 System Shock remake, but the thing is the same old bones with some modern refinements. It will play the way you remember the original game playing, but that wasn't the way it actually played. Cooperman very succinctly explained. It's also important to Cooperman that the team at Night Knife, that the spirit of the original game remains intact. And to that end, two of the original developers from Computer Artwork were brought on board as consultants for the remaster. The Thing Game is a squad-based third-person shooter that tells a direct sequel story to the beloved 1982 John Carpenter horror movie. It was mostly well received at the time and was financially successful enough to have a sequel go into development before ultimately being cancelled. The remaster from the Retro Remaster Pros at Night Dive boosts a native 4K resolution 120fps on PS5, Series X, S, and PC as well as visual enhancements like improved texture animations and lighting. The thing you mastered it's PS5, PS4, Xbox Series, X and X, Nintendo Switch, and PC later this year. So it's coming out on every single platform. Over here in Game Rant, but this to me just seems like a Cliff Blake title. Like they don't know, they're just suggesting. As it says, it doesn't say it's confirmed by anyone. It just says the Legend of Zelda movie can only have one dungeon. The Legend of Zelda director has assured fans that the film is in good hands, but there's a lot about a Zelda game that needs to make it into an adaptation. There's definitely some wiggle room on these some, these, some things. Would it be creative if Link was a silent protagonist just like the games? That's a hard one. The fact that they just brought that up makes me realize that regardless of what they go with, either a total silent Link or a talking Link, it's going to piss off people no matter what way they go. People are going to be like, Link's silent in the games. He should be silent in the movie. But then there's people like, why the F is Link talking? Or they're like, yeah, Link should talk. I mean, I can see this being like a no-win situation, period. Yes, but it's not mandatory. Do fans want to see Hyrule? Obviously. Absolutely. And that means there needs to be a good chunk of Hyrule explored in the first Legend of Zelda movie. Dungeons are especially important to showcase. However, that could also be tricky because the movie shouldn't be a dungeon dense. Throughout the Legend of Zelda video game series, throughout the Legend of Zelda video game series have always been dungeons and dungeons contain a bevy of items and puzzles that Link needs to overcome the progress of the game. Most dungeons can't be completed without solving the puzzles and some other items that Link requires to help against future enemies and or dungeons. But here's a good quote. Zelda games gave us several amazing dungeons and while any of them would be a great addition to the film. It would be interesting to see which one their creators decide to go with. 
well, do they mean they're going to pick a specific named, like, dungeon from one of the games? Or just call it Generic Fire Temple? Or the Gerudo Temple? Yeah, that's basically what I just said. Not every dungeon is referred to as a dungeon either. Some of them take form of a temple, a tower, a ship, and in some instances, Hyrule Castle itself. Why only one dungeon? It would be challenging for a filmmaker to squeeze more than one dungeon into a live-action movie because dungeons are supposed to be time-consuming aspects of every Zelda game. Most of the time, nothing story-wise happens in them either. Yes, they progress the story typically, but that's just because the item found somewhere in the depths of the dungeon unlocks something for Link and his main quest. Furthermore, it would get fairly repetitive if movie goers had to watch Link run. Yeah, they're just like talking like if the movie was just like the game, which is no way it will be. I'm sure there'll be at least one part of the movie where they he has to go into a dungeon to get some type of item that'll help, but not like every dungeon for every item because that would just be stupid. I mean, it's not like they're going to make Link need multiple different items to finish the story. You probably just need like one, like the Sword of Time or some shit because it's probably going to be like one thing, not a bunch. And I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like the Sword of Time or the shield or, or some part of uh, a weapon, maybe the ocarina, I don't know. There's so many different ways they can go with it. It'll be interesting to see what they ultimately decide on. I'm pretty, I'm interested in this game, personally. The Legend of Zelda games are pretty awesome, even though I thought Tears of the Kingdom wasn't as different enough of Breath of the Wild to be all that interesting to me. And graphically, it just looks so garbage compared to playing a Series X. Like, I can't even handle how shitty the graphics look, to be honest, because I am a graphics whore, and I'm proud of it. Watching Link solve multiple puzzles in a, would be tiring for the audience and difficult to make worth watching. There are, however, a couple of ways the director could include multiple dungeons to give the audience the image that they're part of Link's world. Naturally, if Link is a silent protagonist, he wouldn't be giving much of a monologue Oh yeah, Edgen, because he's comparing it to Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves, which is a pretty funny, smart take on the D&D &D universe. Why do they say Legend with no D twice? Because they spelled Legend and there wrong and there and there. Like, this is how bad people are with articles. They're making spelling mistakes. Like, no one gives a shit anymore. Maybe it's all because it's written by the fucking AI or some shit. Which dungeon should the Legend of Zelda movie have? If there would be only one dungeon, it should be Hyrule Castle. Yeah, the movie could start out with them being in Hyrule Castle, and it's the normal one, and then it becomes corrupted in some way. Some shit, like, grows over it, or Ganondorf could take over the castle. I could see that, though. That sounds a little bit too much like what Bowser did in the Mario movie. He just kind of, like, wanted to take over everything. The film should feature the castle at the beginning of its pristine... Oh my god, I'm, I'm saying the exact thing the article says two seconds later because I don't read ahead. It's literally what I just said. Beginning in the pristine stature, most of the fans know for, and then corrupted. I even said the word corrupted. That's crazy. I'm fucking amazing. I'm a fucking genius. I'm like guessing what the article's gonna say before it says it. That's how fucking amazing I am. There are some other solid choices, of course, but the dungeon really needs to fit the theme of the movie. It would be exhausting to watch Link traverse. However, it's possible to combine some features of several temples to make one cohesive dungeon. It would be a good method for implementing some fan service without doing too much throughout the film so general audiences don't feel lost. Wes Ball is a creative director with no stranger to large, sprawling set pieces, having directed Maze Runner and the recent King of the Planet of the Apes. He'll have no trouble figuring out how to handle dungeons in this movie. All right, over here on Screen Rant, the Street Fighter movie has lost its directors as development continues. So there hasn't been a whole lot of news about this film since it was first announced like a year ago. But the fact that Legendary is producing it makes it more interesting to me personally because Legendary makes huge movies. They don't F around. So if Legendary doing it, uh, that automatically makes me way more curious about the level of production value that it's going to have. The scheduling issues lead to the directors Danny and Michael Filippo leaving the Street Fighter movie. The difficulty of adapting a video game without a clear story poses a challenge. The Street Fighter movie loses its directors as development continues. Street Fighter, which spans six installments since 1987, has endured one of the most popular video game franchises of all time. 
and was previously adapted in the 94 fil film featuring John claude Van Damme and 2009's Legend of Chun Li starring Christine Crook. In April 2023, so yeah, over a year, it was announced that another Street Fighter movie was in development from directors Danny and Michael Philip Philip Hugh, if I'm getting that wrong, I apologize. Fresh off their feature debut, A24 Talk to Me, which was a critical and commercial success. So a year later, they have lost their directors. The Street Fighter movie movie has lost Talk to Me directors. However, Legendary and Capcom will continue developing their adaptation of the classic video game and are now looking for a new filmmaker. So the movie's kind of in hiatus. They're, they're still in pre-production, but now they're doing it without a director. It's probably not that easy. So why did the Street Fighter movie lose its directors? Scheduling issues are partially responsible. Sources suggest that scheduling issues are partially responsible for the Street Fighter movie losing Danny and Michael. Legendary and Capcom have hoped to start production soon. Though the Australian twin filmmakers, right, Australian. While scheduling issues are partially responsible, there could be other underlying reasons why the Philippines are no longer working on Street Fighter. The two previous attempts to adapt the video game franchise were both critical and commercial failures, though the Van Damme version gained a cult following. A Street Fighter movie is especially difficult featuring since the video game franchise doesn't have a clear story to it. You just go with the Ryu Ken thing like they work together as friends and then they turn to enemies maybe in the street fighter 2 anime movie is really freaking good they could just take that and adapt that into live action additionally capturing the interactive nature of a one-on-one -on -one fighting game in a passive viewing experience is an especially challenging feat well i don't know there's a movie called mortal Kombat. maybe you've heard of it they did it successfully even the newer one which i think is still not that bad the Philippines no longer working on the Street Fighter movie could end up with beneficial for the directing duo. Instead, they will work on another one of their passion projects, bring her back, and reunite with 824, who are responsible for the studio's highest grossing horror movie. The Philippines will be fine and perhaps better off without the Street Fighter. But which filmmaker Legendary and Capcom turn to next remains to be seen. Or they could end up making a dope movie and they'll be like, oh man, I wish you stayed on that. Over here on Cinema Blend, about Jonathan Nolan explaining why The Last of Us massive success was a good thing. Yeah, well, that's pretty obvious. Do we need to explain that? It makes sense to me. Before The Last of Us, there weren't many incredible dramas based on video games. This show about Joe and Ellie traveling together during a zombie apocalypse was dramatic, serious, and incredibly well done thanks to Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann's leadership. And incredible performance of Bella. Pedro and the Last of Us. This raised the bar for all video game adaptations, and that came after including a fallout. I was delighted, to your point, when Todd and I first sat down for lunch, the bar was not only high, it was non existence. Yeah, because I got at that point, The Last of Us hadn't come out yet, especially in the TV space. You would have had people adapting a first person game, and a studio would be like, So, how? So, the show is going to be in a third person point of view? No, that's the grammatical tick of the game. That's not how you adapt it. It's always nice to be the first one, but when someone makes something as good as The Last of Us, it makes it easier because suddenly everyone understands it's possible. But this was in development before Last of Us came out. So it was like, how did all these game adaptations come in? How are these being in development when like it didn't really take off until early last year? Like it's like they all they were all taking a crack at it, hoping that it would be good. And luckily for them, Last of Us and Mario were big hits. But what if they weren't? This answer was in response to a question centered around the expectations of the HBO show set for other projects. The outlet asked the director if he th thought at any point, damn, now the bar is suddenly high and he responded saying he wasn't. If anything, it was great that Fallout came after Last of Us because audiences like that have more faith going into it because they had gotten such a great adaptation last year. Yeah, exactly. More people who've never played any of these games are like, I mean, think about how many people have no clue that The Last of Us is based on game at all. And I'm sure they still love the show, just like Fallout. I know I certainly had that thought when I started watching it. Outside of the fact that these shows are both of video game adaptations set in post-apocalyptic worlds, they don't really have much in common. 
Totally, the Prime series is way funnier than the HBO project. Also, The Last of Us is a direct adaptation of the video game it's based on. Yeah, it's literally the same story. So, all the people that didn't play the games, it's a brand new story to them. Whereas Fallout took types of characters and concepts from the world of the game and created a totally new story within the world of the fans, of the game, of the new, of the already, and the boop. So that was my news update for the week of June 17th to June 23rd. And I'm reading this out like a crazy person because no one's going to watch this anyway. So I figure why the hell does it matter how I talk? I talk the ways I want. So if you's watching this and you likes the ways I talks, let me know below. If you don't, let me know below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bizzle so you get your notification. Next time I drop a next fizzle. But until then, don't forget to keep gizzling. That didn't sound right. Keep gaming.